Pokemon Sword and Shield is out, and I gotta tell you, I am very excited to be a silly little Scottish girl roaming the British countryside, training sheep to fight dragons. It's gonna be awesome. Oi, I'm Mads with a leaderboard, and we're here today to take a deep dive into Pokemon Sword and Shield. We've gathered 107 facts about what's been added and removed from the upcoming Pokemon games. And they only got me to host this because I'm British. Literally the only reason. Oh, and I like Pokemon. All right, for our first fact, it was believed that Game Freak didn't include any other starter Pokemon from the previous games except for the Charmander line. However, people have since discovered that the other starters from the Kanto region are actually in the game. Trust me, I, I would have been very upset if they weren't there. Number two, okay. I've calmed down a little. The new Pokemon region is Gala, and like most Pokemon regions, Gala's Pokemon draw inspiration from the real world. Gala is based on the United Kingdom, so you can find lots of references to the UK in the new Pokemon. Number three, stepping up to the role of art director is James Turner, who's previously designed several Pokemon, such as the slightly controversial Vanilla Evolution line, as well as Phantops line and several Ultra Beasts. Because of his English background, Turner was consulted about the region even during early stages of the game's development. Number four, let's talk Pokemon. The new fire type starter, Scorbunny, uses its powerful legs to run around and generate heat. Its feet become hot, but it also stores fire in its fire sack, which acts like its second heart. When Score Bunny is full of flames, it increases all its physical abilities. Number five, the new grass type starter, Grookey, he's the best by the way, has a special energy in its body that it can channel through its stick. When it bangs its stick to make music, the sound has the power to heal nearby plants or, as director Shigeru Omori states, instills life. Number six, the new water type starter, Sobble, is already famous for being a crybaby. But did you know its tears are actually contagious? A crying Sobble will make other people and Pokemon cry around it. When it comes to making people cry, Sobble's tears are as powerful as a hundred onions. Number seven, according to director Shigeru Omori, School Bunny was energetic and Grookey set the mood. They wanted a more subdued Pokemon, which inspired Sobble. He also thinks that people who pick Sobble are kind and caring. Number eight, the Galarian starters all take cues from UK pop culture. School Bunny's evolution line is based on sports, from football or soccer to track. Sobble's evolution line is modeled after spies like James Bond, and Grookey's evolution line is inspired by music culture. Number nine, of the three starters, James Turner likes Sobble the most. Shigeru Omori likes Grookey the most, since he likes to party. <laughs> and producer Junichi Masada considers Score Bunny his favorite. Number 10, one of the easiest UK references to spot in the new Pokemon, Yampa, which looks a lot like a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, the queen's favorite loaf of bread. And apparently, the New York Post's hottest dog of 2019. Number 11, Yampa will also catch Pokeballs that fail to capture a wild Pokemon. This means you could use an expensive Ultra Ball on a wild Pokemon and, even if you miss, Yampa will return the ball to you. That's really cool. Number 12, Corviknight and its evolution line are based on common ravens which are native to Britain. Ravens supposedly protect the Tower of London and the Crown. There's a superstition that if the Tower of London ravens are lost or fly away, the Crown will fall and Britain with it. Number 13, Corviknight is a flying steel type Pokemon and is more than just the Skarmory 2.0. It actually plays an important role in the public transportation system in the Galar region. It's used as a flying taxi to fly from town to town, replacing the TM Fly from earlier games. Its character design could even be a reference to the silhouetted bird used in the fly animation from past games. Number 14. Similar to Alola, the Galar region is host to different forms of old, familiar Pokemon. These are known as Galarian forms, and similar to Alolan forms, these Galarian forms differ in both looks and typing. Number 15. The new grass-type Pokemon, Gossiflower, which evolves into Elder Goss, is a rare healing-focused Pokemon. Its ability, Regeneration, heals damage anytime it's switched out of battle. Its nutritious seeds are also said to have healing properties. Number 16. If you combine the names of Gossiflower and its evolution, Elder Goss, you get Elderflower, which is a common wild plant and popular flavor in British cuisine. Elder Goss also looks a lot like a thistle, which has been used as a symbol for Scotland and the Stuart family. Number 17. While on his UK trip, Shigeru Omori heard the legend that if you catch a floating cotton ball, you will have good fortune. This was used as inspiration for Gossiflower. Number 18. In the Gala region, a Farfetch can evolve into Surfetched, who looks like a knight ready to protect the royal family. Surfetched has the signature move, Meteor Assault. The move works similar to Giga Impact, delivers a big hit on the first turn and requires Surfetched to rest on the next turn. Number 19. If you're into ancient history, Stonehenge finally gets its own Pokemon in the form of Stonejourner. The Pokemon resembles a section of the ancient monument. Number 20. In the 18th century, the Industrial Revolution caused an energy to go boom. Game Freak gave Weezing an Industrial Revolution makeover. The Galarian form of this Pokemon has smokestacks on its heads, which also looks a lot like top hats. You know, to uh, drive home the English stereotype. Thanks, Game Freak. Number 21. While the classic Weezing was a pure poison type, the new Galarian Weezing has poison slash fairy typing. 
giving it extremely high defense against fighting, bug, and dragon attacks. Though its smoke may look like toxic pollution, the smoke that emits from its hat is actually purified steam. Number 22. In keeping with the pollution theme, the Pokemon Roly Coley's evolution line is, well, coal. Seriously, it only evolves into more coal. Roly Coley has a new signature ability called Steam Engine that gives it a speed boost after it's hit with fire or water attacks. Until about 100 years ago, every house in the Gala region had a Roly Coley to handle their cooking and heating needs. Number 23. The Generation 2 Pokemon, Corsola, makes an appearance in Sword and Shield as Galarian Corsola. Unlike its pink counterpart, the Galarian Corsola is white and grey, and it's a ghost type, referencing bleached or dead coral. Coral bleaching is actually a real world problem caused by pollution, and what a bleak way to end this section of pollution inspired Pokemon. Number 24. The new Galarian ghost type Pokemon, Poltegeist, references Britain's love for tea. Thank you, Game Freak. Poltegeist? Jeez! Poltegeist is based on black tea. They reproduce by spreading into non-living tea and then splitting its liquid up into smaller containers. Its teapot is not part of its body and can be shed in battle using the ability weak armor. Number 25. Another new food-based Pokemon, Applin, along with its evolution line, looks like an apple. Its final form, Apple Tunt, looks like an adorable apple pie. Number 26. To keep with the food theme, the new fairy type Pokemon, Alcremie, is based on strawberries and cream, a popular dessert in the UK. Alcremie has the ability Sweet Veil, which allows it to temporarily blind its opponent with a sweet smelling cream so it can make its escape. Number 27. Alcremie also comes in different flavors, its alternative flavor giving off a minty vibe with cookies in its hair? as opposed to berries? Um, what is this? Number 28. Obstagoon, which evolves from Galarian's Linoon, represents the UK's rock culture. I know it looks like a member of KISS, which is an American band, but it's probably because KISS has one of the most recognizable looks from that genre. Thank you for joining me in my mental gymnastics trying to justify this fact. Number 29. Joining the countless ranks of Pikachu clones, we have the new electric dark type Pokemon, Morpeko. It can switch between two forms, full belly mode and hangry mode. When it's in full belly mode, its move Aura Wheel is electric type, but in hangry mode, it switches to dark type. Interestingly, the word hangry was only added to the Oxford English Dictionary last year. It means hungry and angry if you didn't already know that. Number 30. On October 5th, the Pokemon Company hosted a live stream inside the Glimwood Tangle area of Galar. And it was during that live stream that Galarian Ponyta was revealed. The Galarian Ponyta is a unicorn that comes with a fluffy tail or no tail at all, depending on its gender. Number 31. The curious new Pokemon, Impitimp, is the first ever Pokemon to have a dark and fairy typing. This grants it full immunity to both dragon and psychic type attacks and very strong resistance to dark attacks. Impidimp trolled the Glimwood Tangle livestream by obscuring the view of Galarian Panita before it got officially revealed. Number 32. The new normal type and fan favorite Pokemon, Wulu, was one of the first Gala Pokemon to be revealed. Wulu's fur is so fluffy that it halves damage from any attack that makes contact. However, this fluffy fur causes it to take double damage from fire attacks. It's obviously inspired by all the bloody sheep we have here. Number 33. The new water slash rock type Pokemon Dreadnought has powerful jaws and access to strong jaw ability, which increases the power of biting type attacks. This includes moves like Crunch, Bite, Fire Fang, Ice Fang, and Thunder Fang. Number 34. The new water slash flying type Pokemon Cramorant has an ability called Gulp Missile, where it can swallow a fish after using Dive or Surf. It will then spit the fish as a counterattack when it's hit. Sometimes it will even spit out a Pikachu, which is hilarious. This is one of the first times we've actually seen a Pokemon eat another animal on screen in a Pokemon game. Number 35. The new legendary Pokemon, Zacian, holds a powerful sword in its mouth. Its name seems to be a play on the word Cyan. Its color scheme consists of Cyan, Yellow, and Magenta, colors that are typically used as ink in the printing process. Number 36. The new legendary Pokemon, Zamazenta, can block any attack with its shield around its mane. Its name seems to be a play on the word Magenta, and its color scheme is slightly darker than Zacian's. Number 37. Junichi Masuda said that if Zamazenta picked up Zacian's sword and held it in its mouth, it would become the most powerful Pokemon in the world. He was probably joking, but still, could you imagine? Number 38. Turner had two goals for the Gala region. First, he wanted to convey the beauty of the UK, and second, he wanted to capture the smaller details of a region, so it didn't seem like a rough interpretation. Number 39. One of the artists paying close attention to the details were the signposts on routes. They originally had a medieval or fantasy design, but Turner requested they look more modern instead. Number 40. The Galarian Pokemon Center designs are partially inspired by the pubs the designer Shigeru Omori saw while visiting the UK. The idea behind using pubs was that they were places that people could gather together. Number 41. Omori's visit to Windermere, England gave him the idea for the first town in Sword and Shield. 
with all the sheep and stacked stone walls. Number 42. The team couldn't make everything realistic. Unlike the UK, Galar includes more extreme locations to make the region more fun. Number 43. If you needed more evidence of all the UK influence, the shape of Galar is basically that of the UK, just flipped upside down. Number 44. When Sword and Shield's region and player characters were revealed, fans took a liking to the female player character, with some even making videos of her as an angry Scottish girl. Hey, uh, editor, can you, uh, can you show the memes? Number 45. Speaking of the player characters, the canon male character's name is Victor, while the female character's name is Gloria. Number 46. As with Pokemon games since Gen 6's X and Y, there's a major new feature in Sword and Shield called Dynamax. A Dynamax Pokemon can have very different battle mechanics than its normal counterpart. When a Pokemon Dynamax ability is activated, it grows into a towering Goliath gaining stat increases and powerful new moves. You can begin to Dynamax your Pokemon once you've collected the key item called Dynamax Band. Number 47. Unlike Sun and Moon, where you can Mega Evolve and use Z moves, Dynamax replaces both of those as Sword and Shield's signature game-changing gimmick. Number 48. When your own Pokemon use Dynamax, the effect will only last for three turns. When a Pokemon is Dynamax, all of its moves become max moves. These moves typically have lingering effects, such as changes to the weather or terrain. Number 49. When Pokemon Dynamax, they aren't really growing in size, unfortunately. They're actually becoming more like a giant holographic projection. Number 50. Unlike Mega Evolutions and Z moves, Dynamax Pokemon can be found outside of trainer battles, making it possible to encounter wild Dynamax Pokemon in max raid battles. Number 51. Wild Dynamax Pokemon can create barriers around them that need to be taken out by attacking a certain number of of times. You can only begin to chip away at the Pokemon's HP once the barrier is resolved. Number 52. Wild Dynamax Pokemon can cancel out of the abilities of a player character's Pokemon. Number 53. If you catch a Wild Dynamax Pokemon, there's a chance it can have a hidden ability. Number 54. A special version of Dynamaxing known as Gigantamaxing not only makes the Pokemon larger, but also transforms its looks. Number 55. As a special early bonus, you can get a Meowth that can Gigantamax as a mystery gift by choosing the Get Via Internet option. Number 56. If you have any play history with Let's Go Pikachu, you will also be able to receive a Pikachu that can Gigantamax. Gigantamax Pikachu bears a strong resemblance to his slightly chubbier Pikachu design from Red, Blue, and Yellow days. Number 57. The same goes for folks who have Let's Go Eevee game history on their Switch, except they will receive an Eevee that can Gigantamax. Number 58. The three special Pokemon I just mentioned may be able to Gigantamax, but they won't be able to evolve. Number 59. Pokemon in this game appear in the overworld, much like how they did in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. The game may still have random encounters, but all random encounters come with an exclamation mark alert. If you react to the exclamation mark alert in time, you can avoid the battle altogether. Number 60. The wild area is a new feature in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where trainers can explore a vast open world of interconnected wilderness. It also features dynamic weather conditions, including sunshine, rain, and thunderstorms. And that means you'll find different Pokemon depending on the weather. Number 61. The wild area was inspired by the vast landscapes of the UK that director Shigeru Omori saw when he was doing interviews for Sun and Moon. He saw the lakes, rivers, and towns in the distance while riding a train. Number 62. It's a simple feature, but one I've personally wanted for a long time. While in the wild area, you'll be able to freely control the camera with the right analog stick. Number 63. The concept behind a singular large wild area as opposed to traditional routes was this idea of returning to a familiar place and spawning differences every time you came back. Number 64. When they say large, they actually mean it. The wild area is roughly the size of two regions within Breath of the Wild. Number 65. The team's need for a large enough area to include multiplayer also played into the decision of the creation of the wild area. Whilst in the wild area, you'll be able to access multiplayer features at any time to interact with other players. Number 66. You can also trade and battle with strangers that you connect within the wild area using the Ycom feature. Number 67. You'll be able to set up a camp in the wild area where you and your friends can hang out with your Pokemon outside of their Pokeballs. Number 68. While camping, you'll be able to make curry for your Pokemon Pokemon in a minigame that's reminiscent of a poffin making minigame from the fourth generation of Pokemon games. Why curry? Well, it's a popular dish here in the UK. Number 69. Pokemon Sword and Shield is the first game in the series that lets the player eat meat. Yeah, seriously. You can put sausage in curry. No, I don't know what kind of sausage. Don't ask me. Number 70. Pokemon can also have jobs in the Gala region and are often employed alongside humans, which kind of reminds me of Rhyme City from Detective Pikachu. In Sword and Shield, trainers can send their own Pokemon off on poker jobs, which allows them to earn experience and rewards. Number 71. When asked if Pokemon are sentient, Sword and Shield's director Shigeru Omori said, they're just getting by. They're just living. Same here, Omori. Same here. Number 72. In the Galar region, Pokemon battles are a popular spectator sport. Gym leaders and champions are celebrated like famous athletes. The numbers on their jerseys use a form of Japanese wordplay called Garaways, which means each number has a meaning. 
Number 73. Milo is the new grass type gym leader, and he looks like he's been eating his vegetables like Popeye. His league number is 831, meaning vegetable. Number 74. Nessa, well known for being stuck in your Twitter timeline, is an expert water type gym leader. She's athletic and competitive, but maintains a calm, cool, and collected demeanor. Her league number is 049, meaning to swim. Number 75. Sword and Shield is the first in mainline Pokemon games to feature exclusive gym leaders. Gym leader B is exclusive to Pokemon Sword, and the spooky little shy guy looking dude is a ghost type gym leader named Alistair, and he is exclusive to Pokemon Shield. B's league number is 193, which means to fight, whilst Alistair's league number is 291, meaning hateful. Number 76. This game's answer to Professor Oak is Professor Magnolia. Her research focuses on the Dynamax phenomenon. Her name is the first in the main series to be a plant instead of a tree. Number 77. Sonya is the granddaughter to Professor Magnolia. She's also the childhood friend of the champion, Leon. Number 78. Chairman Rose is the chairman of the Gala Pokemon League, as well as the president of a large business conglomerate. It's hard to tell if this guy is a millionaire with a heart of gold like Stephen Stone, or if he's a more sinister CEO like Lysander. Number 79. Chairman Rose has endorsed one of your rivals, Bede, to take on the gym challenge. Bede also seems to have other plans outside of a competition. Could he be connected to the game's villain? That's my guess, that kid. Number 80. Oliana is Chairman Rose's secretary, who is largely in charge of running his day-to-day -day business operations. I don't trust the one bit, guys. She's scary. Number 81. The champion of the Gala region is the trainer named Leon. His partner Pokemon is a Charizard, which I guess is why Charizard is the only star that got included. Leon's younger brother is named Hop, and he's one of your rivals. He dreams to be a champion someday, just like Leon. His league number is 189, which can be translated to leaping. Number 82. Marnie is another one of your rivals. Her league number is 960, which can either be read as hardship or black. Number 83. Team Yell, the villainous team for this gen, are super fans of Marnie. They'll do whatever it takes to help her become champion. They also appear out of nowhere, it seems, to cheer Marnie on in battle. Some people have suggested that Team Yell represents a toxic fan base, but take it as you will. Number 84. Sword and Shield introduces the very first dark type gym leader in the main series. Its gym leader also has their own main theme, and it's amazing. Number 85. Due to a statement by Shigeru Omori during an interview with Game Informer, it was once believed that there was going to be 18 gyms in the Gala region. However, this was a misunderstanding. People will only ever face 8 gyms, but because of a version exclusive gyms in each game, the total gyms between games is 18, rather than 18 unique gyms per game. Number 86. Pokemon Sword and Shield has a feature called Battle Stadium, which lets you connect with others online to battle with either your own team or a rented team of Pokemon. Number 87. This time, you can play ranked battles online and slowly make your way up the ranks. Similar to a lot of other games, you'll be paired against trainers of a similar ranking. Improving your rank will increase the tier. The final tier is the Master Ball tier. Once you've maxed out your ranking, you'll only face off against the strongest trainers. Your ranking will reset at the end of each season, but a portion of your ranking will carry over to the new season. Number 88. You'll receive rewards for participating in online battles. For example, you can get a Pearl String as a reward for completing several consecutive battles. Number 89. You can use the Pokemon Home smartphone app to view more detailed information about the Battle Stadium participants. Number 90. You can play in casual battles where anything goes. You can even use Bands Legendaries. Number 91. You can participate in official online competitions. If you do well enough, you can be invited to the Pokemon World Championships in real life. That's so cool! Number 92. You can upload your own rental teams and easily rent teams from other players. All you have to do is enter a 14-digit ID code, which sounds easy. Friend codes all over again? Number 93. You can even battle against other players in ranked battles using rental teams, which means even if you don't have top shelf Pokemon yourself, you can still stand a chance in a competitive meta. Number 94. With a surprise trade feature, you can put Pokemon up for trade, and the game will automatically find a training partner in the background while you continue to play. Number 95. Max raid battles are a new co-op multiplayer experience in Pokemon Sword and Shield. They allow up to four players to fight against one Dynamax Pokemon. Number 96. XP share is baked into Pokemon Sword and Shield. In past games like in X and Y and Sun and Moon, you'd have to use an item to share XP across your party, but now it happens by default. Number 97. There are no HMs in Pokemon Sword and Shield. They were absent from Sun and Moon, and I don't think anyone will really miss them. Number 98. A new system in Sword and Shield allows players to modify the invisible stats for determine a Pokemon's viability. Mints were also added to the game to change Pokemon's personality or nature something that was never possible in previous Pokemon games. The goal was to allow players to make any Pokemon viable, even if it's the first one they caught of a species. 
Number 99. Pokemon Sword and Shield is the first game of the series to include an autosave feature. You can still save your game like normal, but if you power off without saving, you'll have a recent autosave to load into. Number 100. Pokemon trainers in the Gala region can make custom trading cards of themselves. You can make your own card of a Pokemon Center, and you can even get cards based on gym leaders. Afterwards, you'll be able to trade your personal card with other players. Number 101. Card customization allows you to change the background, frame, and even your trainer's pose. Your card is displayed during Link battles, so make sure it looks good. Number 102. Over 250 Pokemon are confirmed to appear in the Gala Pokedex. Unfortunately for some fans, the new games will not come with a national Pokedex. However, the Pokemon company has confirmed that all the Pokemon cut from this game will appear in future games. Number 103. The game initially faced harsh backlash after it was revealed that you can't capture the entire back catalog of Pokemon. You will only be able to import old Pokemon that could be captured normally in the Gala region. Number 104. Pokemon director Junichi Masuda has said that these cuts were made to balance gameplay and conserve resources for high quality animations, which proved to be a controversial statement among the fanbase. Number 105. This will be the first mainline Pokemon game to appear on home consoles. According to a Game Informer interview, Game Freak essentially had to double the amount of staff working on Sword and Shield, going from around 100 people to 180 to 200. Number 106. Composers Monaku Adachi and Go Ichinos return for Sword and Shield. However, this time around, they're not the only ones making music for the game. Toby Fox, creator of Undertale, is a guest composer for Sword and Shield. Yes! He recently composed music for another Game Freak IP, Little Town Hero. Can you believe this man started making music for a mother fan game and is now working with Nintendo? Here's to hoping for another Megalovania. Number 107. This time around, the Pokemon's cries will sound as if they're living creatures, which means this may be the first Pokemon game in 20 years where you never hear this sound. I'm Mads, and thanks for watching 107 Facts about Pokemon Sword and Shield. What do you think? Did we miss anything? Did the Pokemon Company mess up by cutting the national decks? Or do you think the new Pokemon and features make up for it? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of a notification squad.